Singapore is one of the least corrupt nations in the world. Why? Well, many say one of the chief reasons is that the nation's political and bureaucratic leaders are paid salaries commensurate with similar work in the private sector. Last year, for example, Prime Minister Lee made around $2.5 million. He just took a pay cut, and this year he'll make around $1.75 million. That's about four times what President Obama makes. Even with his new salary, Prime Minister Lee is still the highest paid elected official in the world. That made him a perfect person to discuss the topic on everyone's mind in Davos, inequality. The World Economic Forum has this list of global risks, and I was struck by the fact that the number one risk on its list is rising inequality. And it's happening, of course, in the United States, where there's this big All debate. All over the world. But it's happening everywhere. And I was wondering if you would reflect on, on what, uh, what it means and what you can do about it, because you yourself have had to deal with this in Singapore, where you've had to cut the salaries of public sector employees, including your own. No, no, only of the ministers, not of the civil servants. So why did you do it? Well, there was, it became an issue during the elections. Uh, the reasons for one, needing to pay people well, are well, pay people properly, are well established, because you must pay commensurate with the responsibility of the job and commensurate with the quality of the person you're looking for to do that job. And the job is vital because you make a wrong decision, it's billions of dollars, and you put the wrong man in, that's a disaster. And anybody who comes in must make a calculation, must think what are the financial implications, not just for him, but for his wife and children or spouse and children. But when you're talking about salaries which are a million dollars or two million dollars, to the man in the street earning a few thousand dollars a month, it's an incomprehensible sum. I mean, it's defensible, but he cannot wrap his mind around it. So it became an issue in the elections, and after the elections, I appointed a committee to review it and look at it dispassionately. And they decided that the principles were sound. You have to treat, you have to pay competitively, but they recommended a different benchmark and a different number, and we've accepted that. I don't think it will be the last word on the matter, but it's a very difficult issue because it is important to get the right quality of people into government. What do you do about inequality in Singapore? Um, you have your top people are world class, they make millions and millions of dollars. Uh, At the bottom, your, your uh, workers uh, are facing uh, pressures from India, China, uh, uh, It is a problem, like it is in India and China, like it is in every other country. First of all, we make sure that everybody gets a very good education. So no matter which school you go to, you get a first class education, and if you are bright and able, you, you have every chance of rising all the way to the top. Never mind what your background is. Secondly, through our public housing program, through our um, other public subsidies, particularly on healthcare and education, we make sure that everybody starts with some chips in life. You don't start with zero down and out. So you, if you are poor in Singapore, there's no fun, but I think you are less badly off than if you were poor nearly anywhere else in the world, including in the United States. Thirdly, I think that we have to encourage people to try their best to not be satisfied with where they are, but to upgrade themselves. Not just in school or while studying, but all their lives. Let me uh, close by asking you a couple of questions uh, that are slightly more personal. Um, you are the son of a prime minister uh, and the son of really the founder of, of your nation. What is it like to follow in his footsteps? I realize it was not an immediate succession, but still, what, what is it like to have that legacy or shadow? Well, I don't know. I've never not had it. <laughs> it's tough enough, but you get to live with it. Well, I, I've had the honor of meeting your, your father many, many times. He's been on this program several times. He would strike me as, as an extraordinary leader. He'd be a tough dad. Was he, a, was he somebody who was strict disciplinarian? Uh, he had expectations. <laughs> But he left me to do my own thing, and he didn't push me into this, and neither would it have worked had he done so. I mean, I had to make up my mind whether I wanted to go this way or not. My siblings didn't decide to go this way, I did. Um, do you think your children are likely to go into politics? Uh, they will have to decide, but if you ask me now, I think the odds are not on it. It's a different generation. It's a new world, 
There are so many opportunities, opportunities in Singapore, opportunities abroad. For the talented, the whole world is the oyster. If you are in an Ivy League university, in your first year, you're already talent spotted. In your first vacation, you're already offered internships. After your internship, you're offered more or less, here you are, when you graduate, please call this telephone number. And if you're working in Wall Street or in Silicon Valley or one of the startups, you feel like you are the cat's whiskers because you know, ice cream any time of the day is the least of the perks. They need talent, they treat talent well. And Singaporeans, having been well, well educated and completely comfortable in this world, are going in significant numbers in these directions. We have many students studying in America, in the best institutions. We have many students in Oxbridge, some on the continent. And I'm sure many of them uh, will be tempted by these opportunities. And, you and it is a great challenge for Singapore in this situation to make sure that enough decide that despite this, we will be in Singapore and we'll make the system work. And with your children, you, you still maintain the high expectations? They have to find their own path in life. Prime Minister, pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.